Hello, I want to do another example where we calculate the electric field due to a charge distribution. And I'm talking about a continuous charge distribution. So in this particular problem, we have a rod that is along the x-axis. Its length is L. We want to calculate the electric field due to this, the rod. Uh, this is A from the end of the rod. And in this particular example, the charge distribution is non-uniform. It's given by lambda equals lambda naught times x. I have drawn the figure up on the board here. And to do this problem, what I have to do is remember my expression for dE, for an element of charge, dQ, and so I got to take this rod and I break it. I got to break it up into small pieces, small dQs, and derive an expression for dE based on this dQ. Of course, I also need to know my expression for r hat and my expression for r squared. Okay, so let's look at dQ first. We know that dQ is lambda dx which is equal to, in this particular case, lambda naught x dx, as is given in the problem. But if I know that the total charge is q, in other words, if, if I know the total charge is some number q, whatever that number is, I can figure out this number because I can integrate my dq over the entire rod. And if I do that, if I integrate my dq expression, over the entire rod, what that means is I'm summing all my dQs together, I should get the total charge Q. So I integrate over the whole length of the rod, this integral is simple. This is going to give me lambda naught times L squared or two, solving for lambda naught, I get 2q over L squared. Okay, so at least I know what lambda naught is, and I don't have to substitute it right away. I can substitute my lambda naught at the end, how we want to do it. Okay, all right. Um, now we got to find our expression for r squared. r squared is the distance from your dq to, to your point p. It's the magnitude of the vector that points from dq, or our source of the field, to the point in which you're calculating the field. So this is the vector r. Or you want the square of that magnitude. Well, r is going to be this distance, which is going to be l plus a minus this distance x. And so r squared that. Now the last thing is r hat, the unit vector that points from dq to point p, from the source to the point in question. And of course, that's just the, this vector divided by its magnitude. And so r hat is easy to determine in this particular case. r hat is in the i hat direction. And if this is positive, you can see that point P, the, the, the electric field is going to point in a positive x direction because of the fact that for a positive charge, the electric field is always directed away from the charge. Okay, so all we got to do now is put all this together. We'll write, we'll write down what the integral looks like. We'll actually go right down what DE looks like and then we'll integrate it. 
So our DE is going to be K. DQ, I'll just put lambda not x dx. We can substitute lambda not at the end. Okay. And then I'm going to divide by this term. And then I have an I hat there. Okay. So that's my expression for DE. And all I have to do to get the total field here, I have to sum up all the contributions of all the DQs. That means I got to integrate. I integrate over the length of the rod from x equals 0 to L. Now, I'm not going to spend my time here evaluating the integral. You, you, you folks can look up the you know, you guys could actually do this in the group. I don't want to say, I, I, I look it up, but this is something you will learn how to do in Calc 2. But I don't want to spend time doing the integral. Okay, so I'm going to write down the actual final answer here. If you perform the integral and you substitute lambda naught, you get the following expression. I'll let you fill in the steps. You get 2kq over L squared times the natural law of A over L plus A plus L over A. That's the expression. But again, I will let you do the integration. Because I, I feel the hardest part of the problem is setting, getting to this point. You, you all have had count two, and you should be able to evaluate the integral. And that way, I don't, I don't waste time evaluating the integral. Okay, so this is my expression. This is my, my answer. A uh, couple of questions. What if, what if A is way bigger than L. In other words, what if you're really far away? What's the rod going to look like? It's going to look like a dot. It's going to look like a point. So if A is much, much bigger than L, then this expression in the limit of A is much, much bigger than L should give you the expression for the electric field due to a point charge. We should get the electric field to a point charge if A is much, much bigger than L. So, how can we show this? Let me rewrite this. I'm going to write it in the following way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and then I'll get a minus sign in front of you. And you know the, the uh, rules for dealing with the logarithm. If you, if you flip this over, basically you raise this to minus one, you take out a minus sign. So let me rewrite this. I get that. And it's in the i-hat direction. Okay. Now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this term in here. Okay, so I'm just instead of rewriting everything, I'm just going to erase here. And we'll write it like this. So, what happens now? I, mean, I, I think... Well, let's we'll continue. Let's look at what happens if, if L is much, much... If A is much, much bigger than L, this term is not going to be very large. In fact, this term is not going to be very large. It's going to be small. This term will be small, and this term will be small. 
I want to take a look at it when in the limit where that is where a is much much bigger than l, but I, but not infinitely far away. Obviously, if I'm infinitely far away, my electric field will be zero. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use an approximation to this natural law. And, and again, you've learned this in Cal 2, that you can write in the Taylor expansion the following. If you expand natural log of 1 plus x, where x is a number bigger than 1, uh, less than 1, sorry, where x is a number less than 1, you get this as a function, or the series. And so we will keep uh, the second term in the series, so it will only expand uh, up to here. Okay, let's just expand up to here. This term is going to be really small. So we'll expand the expression to the second term. Okay. So if I do that, then I rewrite this expression in the following way. Expanding this to the second term, I'm going to have L uh, over A minus L squared, sorry, L over A squared times a half plus L over A. So this these two represent the first, two, the first two terms in this expansion. Well, it's pretty clear what happens here. If you distribute the minus through, you get a minus L over A plus a L over A. And this minus sign cancels with that minus sign. So you end up getting and when you simplify this. You get 2kq over a squared i hat. And that's the field due to a point charge. So, um, one, of, one of the tricks that you can do in problems like this when you're looking at uh, extreme cases, you can expand a function in a power series and keep the lowest uh, term that survives in your power series. So if I would have kept the first term, I would have gotten, I would have gotten zero. Okay. But if I keep the first two terms, then you can see what the dependence is when x when a is very large. All right, that's it there.